What's up softball players? I'm coach Dan Blewett. In today's video, we're going to talk about how to spin a softball properly when you're throwing overhand, what bad spin looks like, what good spin looks like, and why this matters, why it improves your velocity and your control as far as making accurate throws across the diamond, and why this is a really important aspect for slow pitch and fast pitch players alike to get right. All right, so if you're new here, I'm Coach Dan. I'm a former pro baseball pitcher. In the links in the description below, you'll find my online softball throwing courses for both fast pitch and slow pitch players. And this is something that makes a really big difference, good throwing skills in softball. If you have a really good arm across the diamond, you can play pretty much any position, and it's gonna make you much more in demand to college recruiters or just to that high quality local team. All right, so let's start with the grips. So number one, if you're picking up a ball on the run, like you're gonna throw, like make one of those insane, awesome plays, sometimes you'll just grab the ball and you'll just throw it the way you pick it up. However, in every other instance, so say you catch a fly ball or you get a ground ball and you have some time or you're just playing catch, you wanna to try to quickly get the best grip you can and that's gonna be a four seam grip. So a four seam grip, we're gonna hold the ball like this. So the horseshoe goes sideways or it goes sideways this way. Either way, you can grip across it. This is a matter of personal preference, whether the horseshoe's to the left or the horseshoe's to the right. But either way, a four seam grip, we wanna take three fingers and cross them just over top of the seam. So as the ball leaves our fingertips, we're catching that grippy part of the seam and then we're propelling the ball away with spin like goes like this. So we call it a four seam uh, throw because it goes one, two, three, four. One, two, three, Four. Now, in the baseball world, making a pitch move or not move is a really big, expensive business. So there's so much analytics, there's so much data now on what makes a different pitch move, how can baseball pitchers make a pitch move better. We know that a four-seam grip is the straightest, most true flying pitch a, a pitcher can throw, and it's certainly just the same, the most truest, straightest flying pitch. Uh, seam orientation that you can throw across the diamond, whether you're a catcher, infielder, or outfielder. So a four seam grip is definitely the grip that you want to get. Now let's go over one more thing. You don't want your fingers forked too wide. If your fingers are forked really wide, guess what? They're going to put different pressure on the side of the ball. They're not going to push all of it through the center. You want to force all of your arm speed into the center of the softball. So Basically, the goal is have no more than a one finger gap between these three fingers so that they're going to put pressure evenly in the center and they're going to work as a unit, as like one big mega finger. Lastly, if your thumb is on the bottom, you're going to get the cleanest rollout as the ball leaves your hand. You don't want to have your thumb on the side because it makes you more likely to get on the side of the ball. So let's talk about bad spin while we're on that topic. So bad spin looks like this. When we get on the side of the ball, we can either mix spin in and now it's got a sloppy sort of orientation. So it's got some side spin mixed in with our top spin, or we might accidentally get a little bit to the side of it here. And now it's traveling with a little bit of gyro spin. So it's actually got four seam spin kind of, but it's going a little bit counter to the direction that it's traveling. So if you were to throw right straight over the top and you're actually to get behind the ball, you'd want this good four seam spin, which we'll talk about in a second. You don't want this sideways tilted spin where this will make the ball cut. So if you were to throw this ball 150 feet from the outfield, it'll start to veer off course the longer that it's flying. In baseball, this is how you throw a cut fastball that intentionally moves with jagged movement about four to six inches. So you don't want to accidentally get on the side of the ball where you tilt it and now it's got this sideways tilted spin that makes the ball go off target that way. Now, the thing I wanna address is that you will not get 12-6 backspin when you're throwing. Unless your arm angle was here, and then I could actually impart 12-6 backspin, or my elbow drops and I'm pushing the ball, which you do not wanna do, now I could impart 12-6 backspin. But if I'm throwing from a normal arm angle, somewhere up in here in the one o'clock, uh, to two o'clock range, which most players will throw at in the outfield or overhand in the infield or behind the plate, I'm gonna get backspin from the angle that I throw at. So my backspin will match my arm angle. It'll be at like one or two o'clock. That's still good spin, 
but it's not going to be 12 to 6. This has been a big myth, especially in fast pitch, where coaches are trying to get their players to throw a 12-6 backspin. Unless you throw from this weird arm angle, which no one throws from, or you drop your elbow and push the ball, you will not get 12-6 backspin. You will get 1-7 to seven backspin, and it might straighten out a little more as you release it, but it's going to come off behind your fingertips and if your fingertips are at this angle that is the angle the ball will come off it doesn't make any logical sense otherwise you couldn't possibly somehow fix the ball so that it comes off you know at a 12-6 angle when your arm is at a 1-7 it doesn't make sense if you just throw across the diamond sidearm you can make a really strong powerful throw and the top spin or the backspin quote unquote that you'll imply here if i said top spin earlier i meant backspin uh, the backspin from here will be three to nine. It will be rotating sideways. That's just the way it is. You can't change the fact that your fingers are an extension of your wrist, which are an extension of your arm at release. The ball is going to come off in that orientation, just like a whip. So understand you do want backspin, but the backspin is always going to match the angle of your arm. If you don't believe me, watch a major league baseball game. You'll see a pitcher release a fastball. It's gonna have backspin according to his arm angle. These are the best throws in the world. All those same lessons apply to softball, whether you're playing fast pitch or slow pitch. Now there are a bunch of common reasons that players will accidentally cut the ball, which again, is when they get side spin mixed in or they tilt the ball so that it cuts and moves to the glove side as it, as it flies. The most common reason is that their glove side opens up too soon. So as they're about to throw, their glove side flies open and this sort of pushes the hand around the side of the ball and then they start to cut it. When a player stays closed, whether the glove arm is here or down a little bit, when they stay closed, meaning you can't see my chest, now as everything rotates forward, I can be behind the ball a lot more and I'm applying my power more like punching through a wall rather than like throwing a haymaker or going all the way away around the side of it. So we don't want to have this like side to side where we get on the side of the ball. We want to be more front to back as our hips rotate towards our target. So if you do cut the ball, you get this bad side spin mixed in. Try to think more about moving your chest and your chin towards your target rather than rotating in this sort of like big spinny kind of motion. The other big thing, and this is a tougher mechanical flaw to fix, is that when players as their arm, as their hands separate and their arm starts to draw back, we want to be down with our hands and then our elbow pinches behind our body and then everything hitches up as we start to rotate. However, if the arm goes straight up out of the hands into this position, what typically happens next is the arm will sort of lay awkwardly behind the bot, like too close to the head and then spin out. Or when the arm goes up, it goes back down and then we start to push the ball and we won't get nearly as high quality spin as we otherwise would. So when the hands separate, they should separate down and the elbow should pull behind the body and then your arm will hitch up with the rest of your body and you'll it'll be a very like holistic, full system throw rather than if it lifts straight up. Now I don't get the benefit of using my hips nearly as much and I'm gonna push the ball and I'm gonna throw with a low elbow, which is what they used to say was quote unquote thro throwing like a girl, which it's not a nice thing to use. I don't use that term, really it's called pushing the ball, but that's what they used to refer to when they said that term. And that's, it's a compound problem and it's usually started when players lift too soon. So your elbow and your shoulder line should never get above the line of your shoulders. It should always stay even with or below. And again, if you don't believe me, Turn on a Major League Baseball game, players throwing 90, 95, 100 miles per hour, you will never single, see a single one of them up here, including the infielders, including the catchers. So hopefully today's video was helpful. Obviously, if you want to play a competitive fast pitch, you want to play at the varsity level or in college or professionally, or you want to just want to have more fun on the slow pitch field, making better throws is really important. And when you have bad spin, the right grip will make a big difference and your mechanics will make a big difference. So if you want to learn more about all that stuff, check out my online throwing courses below, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.